Yanni Diakamahal is four-time NCAA champion, one of the most consistent college wrestlers of all time, at least at the national tournament, takes a trip down to wrestle in Pan Ams and has a surprising couple of tough matches. The first two are techs, but the last two he's only able to sneak out victories in the last couple seconds. His semis match with Destrobats was one of the most action-packed matches I've seen in a while. Where most of the US wrestlers are having a relaxing, easy weekend, Yanni isn't. But let's be honest, he's no stranger to close matches and come from behind victories. Match number one against Sixto Acapina, Yanni's super impatient from the start of the match, fires off an early double from space, but Sixto matches his elevation with his head, places his hands down, and blocks the double completely. This head position from Sixto is important to note if you're wrestling someone who's shooting from far away. Yes, you do take hits to the head blocking like this, but it's a great way of stopping shots coming in. Yanni takes a random lefty single, comes up with the legs, drops him off. Sixto actually breaks back exposure here randomly, giving up an early two points. It's almost like he was going to funk, pull the ankle, roll across his back, but realized it was freestyle or something. Score is 2-0, Yanni. 30 seconds in, Yanni snaps and starts looking for a shot on the right. Sixto circles a little, and so Yanni fires off another random lefty single from space. There's nothing too crazy going on with these shots from Yanni. No cool setup or anything. This is more of like, I'm better than you, and I don't feel like setting shots up right now, so pew pew. Yanni catches the right elbow, pulls it down, and does what we call a dump or a barrel roll to make Sixto fall to his side. Sixto bails and gives up a two, likely trying to avoid giving up back exposure. Scores 4-0, Yanni. Yanni keeps the arm controlled, turns it into a two-on-one, one one hand controlling the elbow and another controlling the wrist. In folk style, we call this a hazard, but I've heard it called a cross wrist tilt or a rat roll. I'm sure there are many other names for this. It's a super effective tilt in folk style, but there will be no tilting here in freestyle. Yanni rolls him through the normal way forward for 6-0. 40 seconds in, Sixto takes a randy lefty low leg from space. Yanni reacts well, steps out of it, gets a loose front headlock, circles right as he catches the outside leg, starts to run double, but then changes direction to run the pike, looking for feet to back, which would be four, but he's only able to get a takedown. This is a really good flow of moves coming from Yanni. You'll see the same thing from the likes of Gable Stevenson or Jason Nolf. The step out, snap, circle, single, double, run the pike. When you constantly keep yourself moving and changing direction, it's very difficult to keep up defensively. Makes the takedown that much easier. Yanni goes for a loose leg lace, doesn't get the first one, but readjusts and gets an interesting form of a lace. Yanni's left arm is wrapped around the right leg, right arm wrapped under and hooking the left foot. This looks like an unplanned thing, not sure how easy it would be to get if he tried the exact same setup again, but this is good enough for the 10-0 tech in a minute, four seconds. Match number two against Will Fred Lopez, Yanni goes fake snap, fake snap, easy push out for the 1-0 lead, not much going on here. Wilfredo takes a random low shot, proving once again you need to set up your shots against high level opponents, because anyone like Yanni can react super well. He sprawls back, circles to a lefty single, shelves the ankle on the hip, looking for a leg lace. But Wilfredo bails and keeps his legs apart well, scores 3-0 Yanni. Yanni jumps up to a low gut wrench and rolls Wilfredo for back exposure. This low gut wrench gives a little bit more control of the hips, you actually have leverage over them. More difficult for your grip to slip, than if you were just around the stomach, but it lacks control of the upper body, so Wilfredo is able to avoid the roll, but still gives up the back exposure. Score is 5-0, Yanni. Yanni then goes for what people call a scorpion, or a bow and arrow, sits on Wilfredo's hips, reaches back and grabs Wilfredo's right ankle between his legs with his left arm. The defense to this is keeping that leg as straight as you can get it, maybe coming back up to your base and pulling the knee forward for a second. Either way, you can't give this move up. Once it's all locked up, not only does it hurt a lot, but you can't get out of it. It's game over as long as you don't run out of bounds. By the way, this is illegal in folk style before college. Learn that one the hard way after watching Zane Rutherford do it a lot at Penn State. The ref will call it as soon as you touch the foot. Yanni gets the foot wrapped tight, grabs the heel with the left hand, reaches across the throat with the right. He doesn't get the roll. You need to really choke up on it. Lift the ankle up as far as you can and forward as far as you can. You really want to bend the back out. If it's not elevated enough, it kind of just slips to the right. Yanni is able to get back exposure, but not the roll. The ref stops the position when they come back up to their base for I don't know what reason. Score is 7-0 Yanni. 45 seconds in, Yanni goes for a lefty low leg single, no setup though you can argue that Wilfredo's lefty collar tie helps pull him to the shot. Wilfredo jumps out of it, and so Yanni stabilizes with the lefty underhook. Yanni follows that up with what I call a baseball throw, throwing the underhook over with a similar kind of motion as you throw a baseball. But instead of attacking the near leg, which is more common, he attacks the far knee. This is probably because Wilfredo's stance was super wide and squared up with Yanni. This knee pick isn't as vulnerable to a lateral drop because Yanni isn't really running into Wilfredo. He's kind of just throwing him by. Also, Wilfredo's overhook wasn't pulled down very tightly. If you're too loose with your overhook, this can always happen. This gives Yanni an easy takedown, scores 9-0 Yanni. It is interesting how this is only called two points. Yanni clearly has a takedown here, and then Wilfredo rolls across his back here. I feel like that should be a total of four points. I don't know. Yanni catches the cross wrist again, tries to roll him through, then tries to pull him back, then rolls through again. This is a common way of getting this roll, bouncing from side to side to side, trying to use your opponent's pressure against him to get the roll to go over. 11-0 tech fall from Yanni in a minute, that felt like much longer. Match number three against Austin Destrobatch. This is where things start to get a little more interesting 
interesting for Yanni. He's super strong, fast, and a very talented wrestler. Not even five seconds in, Destrobats catches Yanni posting with his left hand, does a pop-up to a double with his head on the inside, drives Yanni towards the edge for an easy two points. This pop-up is so effective at this level, we see it time and time again. Destrobats then gut wrenches Yanni out of bounds, but it either went out of bounds too early or didn't break back exposure enough, so the points were waved off. Score is 2-0, Destrobats. 20 seconds in, Yanni has a lefty two-on-one, or Russian tie-up. Destrobats tries to attack the far side, which is a nice little counter. It can be very effective if you can pull yourself into a double, but Yanni does a really good job blocking with his head position and a down block with his left arm, and then quickly chases down the right leg. Destrobats faces away, kicks over Yanni's head, likely to force out the back door position or maybe get back to a sprawl, but he slips off of him and so has to kick back over Yanni's head again to go to a bear crawl to avoid a silly easy takedown. Yanni collects the leg, shelves it up to his left hip, comes up to the right hip with his right arm, and secures the takedown. Destrobats stays in a stand-up position. I can only imagine he did that because he didn't think he gave up the takedown yet. Otherwise, he'd be bailing to his stomach to not incur any additional damage. Yanni locks around the waist, trap arm gut, and throws him backwards for another two points. Scores 4-2, Yanni. Minute 20 in, Yanni has a lefty Russian. Destrobats grabs Yanni's left elbow. You would do this to pass the elbow and take that same double that he tried before, but Yanni goes elbow back, pulling it up, pops the left elbow up as he pulls the right elbow to the left, and then attacks a lefty single. Lifting both of these elbows like this gives a clear path underneath a nice little setup. Destrobats sprawls in circles, and so Yanni pops his head out to the outside and starts to come up with it. Yanni reaches for the far leg, but settles for a push-out point, though it's interesting because it looks like Yanni is the first to step out here. No challenge from Red, but it certainly looks like Yanni touched first. Yanni could have benefited from running the pike a little before he cut across to the double, would have been able to get Destrobats more off balance and circle him to keep him in bounds and get a takedown, but he didn't do that. Scores 5-2, Yanni. Minute 50 in, Yanni goes for a double from space. Yanni starts coming up to a high single, and so Destrobats quickly switches his feet and uses a wizard to whip Yanni in a circle, forcing a foot out of bounds for the push out. This is pretty insane mat awareness. Scores 5-3, Yanni. 25 seconds to go in the first, Yanni grabs that lefty Russian again. Destrobats slips the wrist free and attacks a lefty single. Pulls the ankle up, sits Yanni to his butt, pulls the leg up, and gets back exposure. So it should be 5-5 five, five Destrobats, but Yanni has a good body lock here and is able to tilt Destrobats to the right for some back exposure, bringing the score to 7-5 Yanni. Minute 43 left in the match, Yanni fires off another low double. Destrobats jumps clear over Yanni, looking for an ankle on the turn, but settles for a front headlock. Yanni stays down in a grounded position. He's at the edge of the mat. If he comes up here, he could suffer an easy push-out point. Destrobats grabs Yanni's right wrist with his right hand, whips it to the right, and circles hard to the left to get behind for a takedown. This is super sneaky. Very high IQ of Destrobats to think to do this. There is a version of this on your feet where you do a fake, then do this, then your opponent falls, but I've yet to see it done here from short offense. Super slick. Score is 7-7. Seven, seven. Destrobats winning by criteria because they both have the same impact of scoring, and Destrobats scored last. 26 seconds to go. Yanni fires off yet another one of his low doubles, gets a piece of Destrobat's left leg, comes up to it with a double, lifts Destrobat's, looks like he tries to pull the legs in and slam Destrobat's to his back here for four, but Destrobat's catches the mat with his feet, and so Yanni settles for a push out, scores 8 7 Yanni. Red challenges and loses the challenge. Not sure what they were challenging, the push out was super clear this time, scores 9 7 Yanni, and this is the end of the match. Destrobat's really pushed Yanni to the edge here, such a high level match. Yanni's ability to fire off double after double from space and have the flexibility and strength to come up with it is rather silly. A lot of his shots aren't set up well, but he's strong enough and flexible enough to make it work anyways, which is super interesting. Match number four against Alejandro Valdez, a much calmer match, though not without its own share of drama. Minute 30 in, Valdez gets put on the shot clock, doesn't get much going, so Yanni gets the passivity point, scores 1-0 Yanni. Two minutes 20 to go, Yanni gets put on the shot clock, doesn't get much going, so Valdez gets the passivity point, scores 1-1. Valdez is winning by criteria because it's tied and he scored last. It takes takes 5 minutes and 30 seconds before anything cool happens. There are shot attempts, sure, but nothing that leads to anything of real value. Yanni did 95% of the shooting, and then Valdez tried to capitalize on the upper body stuff, like head pinches and whatnot. Valdez is looking like he's wrestling a Greco match here. 30 seconds to go, they're in an over-under position. Yanni does a really interesting baseball throw. Looks like he's aiming for the ankle, but Valdez sprawls back, and so Yanni lands on the knee. Slips off of it, but Yanni has a far hip held with Valdez holding onto the wizard. Yanni has a really good angle here, so he comes up to a cement job. Valdez tries to jump over Yanni, not sure where he was thinking there. As long as Yanni circles his hips to the left, he'll land up on top with Valdez on his back. Valdez falls back over. Yanni lets go of the head and circles around for two points with 20 seconds to go. Five seconds to go, Valdez grabs a piece of the outside knee, tries to do to Yanni what he did to Sasso in NCAA Finals. Gets his feet out to the side, tries to cartwheel over, but Yanni clearly understands what he's going for. He steps back over that near leg, cartwheels with him, without giving up back exposure. Valdez puts Yanni's leg in, lifts it, and it looks like there's some back exposure here for him. It's super close, but the ref must not agree. Challenge is called
stalled and lost, and so Yanni wins 4-1. An interesting weekend for Yanni for sure, but historically he does have a lot of close matches. He tends to wrestle to his competition a little, which is super unfortunate given how good he really is. He does fire off shot after shot, so it's not like he's not being aggressive, just doesn't always use amazing setups, which tends to land him in hot water from time to time. His goal seems to be just to get into a scramble, which he usually wins, so I can't blame him for that. Not trying to take anything away from him, he's super talented and one of the best wrestlers we have here on the world team.